Well, I met my first Macintosh at a computer store about one week after the introduction of the machine. And I walked up to it. The salesman said, go ahead, play. And I played for just a very short time. And I just said to myself, this is it. This is the way it's supposed to be, the way computers should work. You remember, we have three, uh, three families of Macintoshes, the, the, uh, the compact one, such as DSC or DSC30 or the Plus, and the modular one, such as the Mac 2 and the Mac 2X. So today we're announcing the Mac 2 uh, CX. And what I'd like to do first is give you an inside guided tour of the Macintosh 2 CX. What you have here is the, uh, the bottom case. Uh, the, 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 the plastic is metallized to eliminate uh, radio frequency interference. This is the, uh, the logic board that goes into the, uh, into the case. Uh, you'll see three new bus slots, as opposed to six on the Mac 2 and the Mac 2 uh, CX. And you have the, uh, the Motorola 6803 or processor, the floating point coprocessor. Uh, this is the ROM. Uh, there's a uh, SIM slot for uh, future ROM upgrades. Uh, these, these are the eight uh, SIM slots for DRAM. We have, uh, as you know, we have lots of DRAM, so, you know. <laughs> buy, buy DRAM while it supplies last. Um, so, I'll put that in the bottom case. Uh, then comes uh, the uh, sto uh, storage, excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself. Then comes the, uh, the speaker. 
to a speaker much much uh, larger uh, than the speaker you had on the ASC or the or the two, which provide better sound quality, better volume is placed towards uh, the uh, uh, the user, and it drops into the computer here, and is connected with uh, this uh, cable. There's a stereo sound jack in the uh, in the back. Then the storage uh, subsystem with the floppy at the bottom and the hard disk at uh, the top. We supply the hard disk in two uh, flavors, 40 and 80, uh, 80 megabytes. You know, everything they said, it, everything worked at the rehearsal. You know. So we have the power connector in. We have one cable for the floppy drive, which obviously I have some trouble putting in. Don't try this at home. You know. As they, as they say. Oh, as the Volkswagen adds, so now we have the storage subsystem. This is the power module with the uh, air motion device, which we made even, uh, which we made even quieter. Ventilation is from front uh, to back to keep the noise uh, out, in, out in the back and the, and the, the power supply mod module uh, drops in place. This is the uh, Nubus uh, video, 8-bit video card that drops in here. And we have a fully assembled Macintosh uh, 2CX uh, here. And um, <laughs> I will see if it works. So maybe I can uh, get a, a monitor, I'll, I'll plug the uh, Keyboard and mouse. Thank you. Sound. This is one of the uh, video cables. And the last cable, I think, I hope. And we'll see if it works. Well, we have a lift off, I think. <laughs> yes, yes. So this is our newest uh, Macintosh, the Macintosh uh, 2CX. And I'd like to say a few words before taking it through its uh, paces so that it introduces itself in, in more detail. I'd like to say a few words about the design goals we, uh, we had. One was to obviously uh, listen to uh, feedback from our customers who uh, cared uh, for a computer that would be even quieter than the Macintosh 2. Uh, that would take a less, less uh, desktop space and could be used in various, uh, in various positions. You saw a lot of Macintosh uh, tools uh, being used on their side. Well, this computer 
It is designed to be used on each side. You can have uh, rubber feet on the side. You put it uh, you know, on, the, on the right or the left of the computer. Or you can even put it under the counter. Um, we wanted uh, to, uh, to incorporate uh, what we uh, uh, thought was the best of uh, design for manufacturing, which I hope I established by showing how easy it is to assemble and repair uh, the, computer, the computer. We wanted speed and more speed. We wanted compatibility with the past of system software and application software, as well as a platform that was ready for the future of the uh, system software evolution. So this is, in my, uh, in my opinion, a, um, the nicest computer we've, uh, we've uh, done so far. It, uh, it speaks well for the, uh, the, de the dedication and the talent of the engineers and the manufacturer who work together for, to make uh, the physical design as elegant as the system software uh, design. And um, now I'd like to, I'd like to uh, explain a few of its, uh, a few of its features. First, uh, we designed it, as I said, for flexibility. Uh, we changed uh, the, uh, the entire physical design so that, for instance, it could be, it could be placed on, on the side or under the counter, but also that airflow uh, came from the front into the back that would eliminate noise, would provide the ability to use the computer in various positions with a monitor on top uh, of it, for instance, that would not obstruct uh, the, uh, uh, the airflow. So flexibility was an important uh, design point in, uh, uh, in this computer. We are trying to make it as easy uh, to live with by that, that as, as we know how to. The, uh, the, the loudspeaker is another element. Our customers uh, like the sound, the stereo sound uh, on, in the Macintosh 2. It's 44.1 uh, kilohertz, the same rate as the CD uh, sampling uh, frequency. And uh, by the way, all the animations that you, you have seen uh, and you will see today and the sound are produced on a Macintosh and executed by, uh, by a Macintosh. Then at the heart of the, uh, of the Macintosh uh, 2CX is the 68030 uh, Motorola processor, which is the high end of the Motorola family. In the Macintosh 2CX, 2CX you have a 16 megahertz full 32-bit uh, processor that provides about four times the throughput of a 68,000 that you find in a, uh, in a Macintosh SE, for instance, uh, in part because of the clock uh, frequency moving from 8 to 16 megahertz, but also because of the wider data path as well as the on-chip uh, uh, data and instruction cache. Then we have the 6882 uh, floating point uh, core processor. Uh, that uh, core processor is fully compatible with the 881 uh, that we uh, have on the Mac 2 uh, and provides about 400 times the speed that you can observe on a Macintosh SE. And we'll, uh, we'll get back uh, to that with some proof of that uh, later uh, today. Um, then we have uh, Nubus. We have three Nubus slots instead of uh, six, which is, which is why we, we managed to make uh, the uh, footprint uh, substantially smaller than with the Macintosh 2 and the Macintosh uh, uh, 2 CX. Let's uh, uh, remind ourselves that this is a 32-bit bus, very high speed, that provides the ability to have multiple masters on uh, the bus, meaning you can have very intelligent cards designed independently of the main processor that can offload uh, the machine of uh, complex tech for graphics maybe someday and definitely for communications uh, in, the ne in the near future. Memory, there are eight SIM slots on the motherboard. Uh, depending on whether you use 256K or one megabit chip, you can have memory coming in, in one, two, four, five, or eight megabyte of capacity on the, the, uh, on the, uh, on the motherboard. And this motherboard is, is ready for four megabit parts, so the capacity will be quadrupled when the four megabit uh, parts will become uh, available for which this computer has been uh, designed. The uh, disk drive, the floppy drive, is the uh, new super drive from Apple computer, 1.4 megabyte of uh, capacity, uh, compatible with the 400 and 800K uh, 
uh, formats that we used previously on the earlier Macintosh. It also provides data file compatibility with other environments such as Apple's uh, Apple II products environment, but also MS-DOS and OS2 environment, thus making our customers' lives uh, even easier in a multi-vendor environment so they can move uh, data around without uh, uh, difficulty. So this is the, uh, the Macintosh uh, 2 uh, CX. This is the uh, latest uh, member of uh, the modular family as opposed to the uh, compact. Now we have some more, uh, some more exciting uh, products uh, and to introduce uh, them and, and talk about uh, our overall company strategy, I'd like to bring the, uh, uh, to the stage the product manager in the sky, the chairman of the board, uh, John Scully. Very much. I had the opportunity just before the Christmas holidays to build a Macintosh 2CX over at our Fremont factory as John Louis assembled it here today. And it really brought home for me how true the statement is that our products really show the philosophy of our company. Uh, this is Apple Computer at its best. Uh, best in design, uh, best in terms of uh, what we are trying to do with personal computing. And in many ways, this will shape the destiny of Apple and personal computing as we head out into the 1990s. So what the Apple IIe was for us in the early 1980s and what it helped us to become in this decade, I believe that the Apple II CX is going to serve a similar role in the late 80s and as we head out into the 1990s. This may be one small box, one CPU, but it represents many different computers. And that's what I'd like to talk to you about for a few minutes now. Two years ago, we introduced the Macintosh SE, and this has become the most popular Macintosh computer that we've ever brought to the marketplace. But even amongst its greatest enthusiasts, there has always been a great desire to have a larger screen, to have expandability, and to have a product that could support color. With the entry level 2CX, with the Mac 2 uh, 12 inch 640 by 480 black and white screen, we have a product which addresses many of those issues, and it gives us the new bus expandability. But I think the product that I personally am most excited about is the one I'd like to introduce to you right now. And this is the 2CX with a portrait display. I've had the... I've had the uh, opportunity for the past two months to have a 2CX with a portrait display at my, my ranch. And uh, I use it all the time. And, and uh, if you are a Mac fanatic as I am, uh, you uh, will really want to get your hands on, on this particular machine because we all remember the Japanese woman woodcut that was first shown when the Macintosh 128K was introduced. Uh, but we've never seen all of the picture and I'd like to show you the rest of the picture. <laughs> Some of, you, <laughs> some of you may have seen me walking around Macworld Expo in, in January, and I had this little photographer's loop. It's a magnifying glass, and I was going up to uh, different monitors and looking at the corners. And I saw some people saying, what's he doing? Well, what I was doing was looking at the resolution, because for uh, a full-page portrait display like this with wide deflection, it's very difficult to get sharp focus in the corners without having bowing in the center of the screen. And what our engineers have accomplished here is a no compromise display. It has the same resolution that we're used to with the Macintosh uh, nine inch screen, a higher DPI, uh, that's 72 dots per inch. This is actually uh, 80 dots per inch, supports four levels of, of grayscale. 
Um, in fact, it can support all the way up to 16 levels of grayscale uh, with the 8-bit card. And this is a product which uh, I first realized the importance of high resolution when I was writing my book a few years ago. I started out with um, a third-party display because I wanted something larger, but then I had to move back to the 9-inch screen on my SE because sitting in front of the computer hour after hour uh, was very difficult with, with flicker and, and uh, uh, soft focus. Um, there is no problem sitting in front of this machine hour after hour because I've, I've done it now for, for several months. I'd like to give you an example of just what graphics look like. One of the big opportunities, I think, for the full page display is to open up new uses for the Macintosh. Uh, Claris has come out with a product called Smart Forms. Uh, here's a smart form for the uh, 1040EZ, uh, which some of us will be filling out pretty soon for our, our uh, income tax here in the United States. It lets you see not part of what you get, which is what WYSIWYG has been for many of us, but it lets you see all of what you get when you print it out on an 8.5 by 11 inch uh, page or an A4 in, in Europe on a laser writer printer. And that uh, it becomes obvious of the significance when you look at the forms. Uh, here's a look at what some graphics look like. This happens to be uh, Adobe's Illustrator. And here's another one, which is uh, PageMaker. And I, I might say one of the uses that I found particularly um, helpful to me is that I use a number of different uh, electronic mail systems. And one of them is MacNet from, from Connect. Uh, this is a very good user interface on MacNet and ideal for a full page display. Because what happens is when you receive a message, the message that you want to respond to sits at the top of the screen. And then you get a blank message sheet below that, already self-addressed or addressed to the person uh, you're responding to with the same people copied on it. And you can refer back to the one you're answering while you're creating the new one. You don't have to click back and forth between windows as you do with some other electronic mail system. So it has some tremendous intuitive advantages to it besides just being high resolution. I'd like to give you even a further example of what you can do with uh, configuring different computers, again, from the same CPU box that Jean-Louis assembled just a few moments ago. And this is our two-page display. We can bring that out. Now, the two-page display is something we've been working on for several years. Uh, same high resolution that I described to you with the portrait dis display, only you can see two pages side by side. What Apple has always been good at is recognizing a high technology that may be used by a few and, and then say, how do we take that down and popularize it so that ordinary people who are non-technical can use that and get the same level of enjoyment as well as, as functionality out of it. Uh, the setup I've got here happens to be using two displays. It's got the two-page display and the portrait display, both being driven off of the same Macintosh CPU. Now, engineers for a long time have used two, page disp two uh, computers off, two uh, displays off of the same computer. Uh, what is different here is that we have what we call virtual display, which means that uh, I can control both the workspace and the document space with the same mouse. When the 128K Macintosh came out, my desktop was relatively clean, as I'm sure yours was. There wasn't uh, much you could do with it. There were just a few applications. There was no hard disk. Um, but now desktops are getting pretty cluttered. And I found in my own use that my desktop has lots of things on it. So when I have a workspace, I don't always have a lot of room left over for what I'm trying to create with the computer. Now I do. And this is probably the um, most dramatic example of that. So for example, if you were doing publishing or presentations and you wanted to create this document, you could reach over to your workspace and with what we call virtual display, and this is something which you can't do with computers that support two displays, virtual display lets me grab that and actually move it across. I can move that back and forth. So let's just take this and put it into place like that. Now, I want to go 
over into my spreadsheet. And I can take this uh, spreadsheet model. And let's go up and build a, a chart. One of the things that's really nice about the Macintosh, let's click on chart here. OK, there's our chart, is that because I'm using MultiFinder and different applications and the consistency of the applications is the same, the menu bar doesn't have to change as I move from one application to the next. So you really start to appreciate the value of consistency in the system software and the way developers have followed it with their applications when you're doing something like this. Now what I want to do is I want to move this chart out of the spreadsheet application into the publishing application. And so the way I do that is that I'll go up, first of all, let's decide where we want to put that over here. And let's see. Well, we're going to go back here. I'm going to copy the chart. Now I'm going to paste it over in the publishing application. OK, now that has been pasted into this application. So I just reach over here with my mouse, and I can drag that down and put it into position. And I've started to create more of my document. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Larry Tesler. Hello. I'm here today to give a bit of a personal perspective that ties together the announcements you've heard today with a little bit of the past, a little bit of the future, as seen by myself. As you know, I run the Advanced Technology Group at Apple. That's a research group. And what we do is we take dreams we have today about what computer technology could do for people in the future, and we try to make them real by doing experiments in technology, architecture, applications, and so on. And uh, generally, when we come up with, come up with these uh, dreams, which are some of our own and some of other people's that uh, we decide to tackle, the uh, difficulty of them seems very great. And uh, it helps to look back to see what past dreams have resulted in today. Today, as I was watching the demonstrations of the Macintosh CX with the full page display and with the two full page display, it reminded me of uh, a dream I had myself 20 years ago this year, 1969, when I was working on a magazine as a volunteer. And we were, we were doing paste up, fiddling around with scissors and, and paste. And, and uh, pasting up camera-ready copy for a community magazine. And as I was doing it, I thought, this is such a waste of time. This should be done on a computer screen. And about two years later, I got myself involved in my first page formatting project at Stanford, and then went on to Xerox Park, and then came to Apple, and always kept in my mind this dream that someday people could do uh, much better paste up. Of course, with uh, the introduction of uh, the desktop publishing technology on the Macintosh a few years ago, that's been achieved. But today is a, a really special day because with the portrait display and with the two full page display, those things that uh, I envisioned 20 years ago can now be done just the way I had them in mind a long time ago. And that's a very rewarding thing. But it's also sobering to see how much work had to be done in between to get, get to where we are today. When I came to Apple, one of the major problems that had to be addressed before we could get to the point we are today was user interface. At that time, Personal computers were pretty easy to put together. But actually, learning all the different applications, learning how to use the machine, was a very difficult thing to do. So I joined the Lisa design team, which had started a few months before I got to Apple in 1980. And we started looking at the problem of how to make that easier. What we came up with was a series of design principles. Now, there were three design principles, I think, that were really key and that have really sustained us. Uh, one is intuitiveness. As you know, we try to use some metaphor that the user's familiar with so that as they work on the screen, uh, the things they're familiar with in the problem they're working on and in their work environment are, are reflected there. And I think everybody's very familiar with, with the Macintosh metaphors uh, that we use of desktops and folders and using cut and paste, which was my contribution to be sure we could do uh, page layout someday, and various other things that, that are uh, intuitive, the control panel and so on. But intuitiveness is not enough. Another principle we came up with that really turned out to be key was consistency. 
The idea, as John pointed out, that as you move from one application to another, what you've learned in one can be applied to another. But it's more than that. With MultiFinder, as you go back and forth between applications, if you needed to be running into unfamiliar menus and different sets of commands as you went back and forth, that would be particularly difficult. So with MultiFinder, this uh, rule we made about consistency has become even more important. Another thing that's been extremely important is integration. When you buy a Macintosh, you're not buying hardware designed by one vendor, an operating system designed by another, network designed by another, and so on, and then bolting them all together. The whole thing's been carefully crafted by our engineers so that it all works together in a very seamless way, so that mouse motions are smooth, all the, if you can print on your local printer, you can print across the network, and so on. And yet, we're able to, because of the design of the architecture of the Macintosh, we're able to interface the Macintosh with other computers, for example, to connect our network to other networks. And again, for the user, the experience is unchanged. They get that consistency because of the way we've integrated those other people's network protocols and our protocols together. Now, over the years, it turned out that there were a couple of other principles that we didn't pay enough attention to that turned out to be very important to our customers. And today's announcement, I think, really represents Apple's uh, evolution over the last few years in really accomplishing these two other goals. And those are extensibility and configurability. Extensibility means that as we increase the product line, you can take the applications that you had before and either use them as is or get very minor upgrades from the developers and move yourself up the line. There are applications that ran on the 128K Mac on the small screen that run today on the Mac 2CX using the two full page display without any change at all. This is very important to our customers because the investment they make in software, the data files they produce, the learning they do, doesn't have to be discarded as they move up either to more powerful configurations of a machine, adding new displays and video cards and bigger disks, but also as they move to other machines in the product line. The other thing that we found to be important was configurability, which again, the Macintosh 2CX announcements today really display, and I think John went into that very well in terms of how you can attach all, all these different things to it and set things up the way you like it.